Hey guys, welcome back to our real love scenario. Shout out to all our welcome real lovers back. out there. We are back. Welcome back. Mm-mm. Welcome, welcome back. Back. Uh, uh, back. We are back. I got a strong snap, Nana. You do. That was good. Yeah. That was good. <laughs> the <laughs> listeners don't know who's snapping which time. That was Dre. That was Dre. This is and mine. that's Rhonda. Yeah. Good snaps. Good snaps yes. all around. We are back. It is a very rainy week here. It is. You know, I always get the weather report. It's a yeah. rainy week here. The weatherman, Dre <laughs> Smith. In the DMV. Um, but we're here and we're in between two, recording this in between two holiday weekends. Yeah. So, you know, it's just a little more just like cool and calm collected. I'm okay calm, with collected. it raining then, in, in the off holiday week. Yeah. Just keep the keep the sun shining for the holiday Yeah, weeks. for the 4th and Juneteenth, just keep it keep it good. That's right. That's, it was a beautiful day on Juneteenth that I didn't get to fully experience. Mm. Were um, you working? I wasn't. That is, I, was, I was about to say, that's a shame. No, I mean, I was scheduled to work. Oh, wow. I was scheduled my... You, if y'all watch it on YouTube, you see my eyeballs? <laughs> yeah, the way I work at. <clears throat> Juneteenth is not an observed holiday. Okay. Um, but I had two asthma attacks mm, last yes, weekend you did. Um, on Sunday. And so I was recovering on Juneteenth. Gotcha. So I had a day of rest that I deserved as a black person. Yes. But did not feel that great for sure the, the, but i did take myself to dinner that night that's good i started feeling better and i was like i want to just go and and take myself out so i had a little solo date at a restaurant in baltimore that i've been wanting to go to and it was divine that's awesome it was divine that's so, awesome yeah. and let me tell y'all real lovers how much Rhonda loves y'all Rhonda had an asthma attack on saturday she showed up on sunday to record the next episode yes and then she had another asthma attack later that sunday so she loves us here i do we appreciate her <laughs> Thanks, guys. Pray Thanks, for her. Jay. Please pray for her because I haven't had asthma. Because this week the allergies coming like Mike Tyson okay. and Floyd Mayweather okay. and Roy Jones. Everybody combined. For my asthma folks out there, I haven't had asthma in 16 years. I outgrew it and it came back. And so I pray to God that it was a moment. Yes. And the moment is gone. For sure. But that pollen slash fentanyl cocktail that's going on <laughs> around this season is crazy. <laughs> Putting people down. For sure. <laughs> oh my gosh well we're glad that you're here and that you're feeling better i am yes 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 um so shout out to all of our real lovers out there you know we love you guys thank you for reviewing thank you for continuing to watch the show and listen to the show because the numbers are going up and we're happy and mm-hmm. excited welcome to all the new people yes um i want to shout out those people my friend um somebody that no i don't know how long now but Kia, mm-hmm. uh, she is somebody that I've interacted with a lot, you know, when I'm going out in the, in the, into D.C. Mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And she said that she has seen the clips for so long, but she finally decided to, like, listen to the show. And she was like, I was listening to you guys all day. Um, so it's always cool to have, like, a friend who is interested. And yes. I don't ever, like, beg my friends to do Me something either. or ask them to watch or yeah. ask them to do anything. Um, but that she saw the content, liked it, and decided to listen to the show and really like Likes the show, like shout out to her. Hey, kid girl, and thanks out, for listening. For sure, if you love it, you know what I'm gonna say. Somebody else will too, so make sure you share it. For sure, yes. Shout out to all the new real lovers who have joined us this episode. Yes, and I also want to quickly shout out a photographer that I met at um, the Afram Festival in Baltimore last week. Um, Brandon Derrick, who is also a listener of the show, pulled me to the side and was like, "I just want to tell you, I love the podcast. So thank you for listening or watching. Whatever you do, we appreciate the love. For sure, we yeah. appreciate the love. Um, and like I said, if you're new here, we always give love to our real lovers because they're part of the family so mm-hmm. every episode you don't have to go through this because we shout our people <laughs> out we, we want to give love to the real lovers and speaking of our real lovers um i have a review well really a comment from the amanda episode if you have not listened to the episode or watched the episode with amanda sills make sure you check it out it's a great interview it's yes. a lot of fun um i think one of the reviews i read last time somebody was like i watch everything amanda and i still learn something new mm-hmm. um it's a lot of fun a lot of perspective you'll laugh you'll be like, ah, oh, I didn't think of things that way. Yes. You know, gems dropped, everything mm-hmm. like that. So make sure you check it out. But this comment is from Show. Yes. And Show says, I never heard of this podcast, but I love Amanda and Clicked. And this podcast and the interviewers were fantastic. Oh. Flowed beautifully and asked great questions and seemed genuinely interested in her experiences slash answers. Very conversational and interesting to listen to. Heart. Oh, 
Simone. Thank you, show. Thank you. It's the fantastic for me. Fantastic. <laughs> I love like when people use like different words to describe something as good because yeah. there's so many words like good, like great, like amazing and incredible. But then when people say like a fantastic or a sensational, you're like, oh, that's different. Put the fan on. I want my hair to blow back. <laughs> Get into your adjective bag. <laughs> Get into it. <laughs> Thank you, show. Thank you so much. And we appreciate all the real lovers. Make sure you comment, subscribe, um, review our podcast because that really helps out a lot. And Please. we want to highlight you guys and, um, you know, share with the world what you feel it about means a lot you know, to our us. podcast. Yes. Thank you so much. You yes. want to hop into our real life love scenario? Let's do it. So I think I have it this week. Yes. Um, I came across this um, this reel. It's a married couple. They're they're very popular. Um, and she sometimes kind of like does these little funny videos with her husband because yes. she's much more social into social media than he is. Right. So a lot of times when he comes on camera, he's like. Mm. what you want now that's how i'm like i'm like that with brie <laughs> if y'all watch her stories at all i'm like why is the camera out right now i don't feel like it i don't feel like it but she was like you know um she was reading something that said um should married couples or spouses or partners or whatever be able to go into each other's phones like have full reign and full access to the phones and she's talking first when she's like i'm gonna see what my husband does when i basically ask him so she calls him in and she's like, babe, what do you think? Somebody said that like spouses should be able to go in each other's phones with no issue. And he just literally digs in his pocket. And he was like, I don't care. And he just like pulls his phone out, hands it to her and walks away. Because as I said, he don't want to be on camera. Yeah. Um. And she was like, well, I mean, I guess y'all have have his answer. So it just made me want to talk about that. Like, do you think that your spouse or, you know, couples should be able to just have free reign over each other's phones like upon request like i want to look at your phone do you think that that's problematic or it's okay i think that that's okay but it's levels to access mm -hmm. like i'm married now and brie and i have access to each other's phone but especially now with iphones and the keychain and all that stuff like that and mm -hmm. how the apple id works and password mm -hmm. basically like if you have face ID on your phone and your partner has access to your face ID, you can use your face ID to log into your bank account. Yeah. You can use your face ID to log into so many different other apps. They'll just let you use your face. Mm -hmm. So if we just starting off dating, even if it's six months, I'm not doing face ID for you to have access to my phone because what you'll be able to have access to may be things that I may not want you to have access to yeah. at this point. It's and it's not point. even like anything like I'm hiding or anything. It's no. just like, maybe I don't want you to know all of my financial information at yeah. this point. Yep. Um, but now with my wife being my wife, it's like, my phone is your phone. Your phone is my phone. Yeah. Like if you did, if you need my phone for anything, you can grab it. Mm -hmm. If you see my phone ringing, you can pick it up. Mm -hmm. If I'm not there, like, whatever it shouldn't be a person who's calling me that is like whoa why who is, you, who is this or why is she answering or that it would ever be a problem yeah it should be that she could pick up my phone and be like hey it's brie mm -hmm. uh dre's like in the shower dre's doing like that oh can you tell him to call me back or like uh, does he have a second or something like that because yep. they know who whoever's calling me they know you're married they know i'm married and they know my wife yes so i don't have an issue with it at all but mm -hmm. i think that there's just levels yes. when it comes to dating versus like if you're actually married to somebody mm -hmm. i agree with you i um think that like if we're really committed especially if we live together like yeah. for those who may not again want marriage i do so under in marriage i'm like for sure you could probably have access to it before marriage but we would have had to have been together for a significant amount of time and like i said probably living together because if we're sharing the same residence you should probably know lots of things about me you likely know my finances you likely know my date of birth you probably you potentially know my social security number because maybe we applied for this place together we bought this house together so at that point yeah probably you are probably also like my emergency contact so i feel like you need access to my phone in the event of an emergency so mm -hmm. i would never want 
it to be a thing where you can't get inside of it, especially if you need it to. For sure. Obviously, if it's a thing of like you're doing it because you don't trust me, that's a bigger conversation and we need to have a bigger conversation about it. But like you said, I ain't had nothing. So have at it. Knock yourself out. My only caution to the wind. Yeah. As a woman, because I know guys don't necessarily um they're not as open when they share certain things. Yeah. Like I feel like men are a little more buttoned up. Like y'all don't necessarily talk to each other the way that women talk to each other. Mm. I just caution you to the wind that there may be things in my phone that really aren't your business and Incl- up to and including pictures of my friends. Yeah. Like that's true. Naked, spicy, stuff sexual like that. Yeah, that's pictures very true. of my friends. Like sometimes I've, I've had pictures of my friends, um, not even because they're trying to be like, do I look good in this picture? It's like, would you you ever seen this before? And like, and it's an intimate part of her body, mm. you know. Like, I don't. So if you just wanted to peruse, you know, I don't necessarily want you to just be in my phone perusing because it can get very spicy in there. Up oh, sexual pictures, even of other men, because some of them are single. Yeah. Maybe they, it's maybe they, the group chats be spicy. The group chats be group chatting. The group chats be spicy. Telling you. So that's all. But yeah, I'm with you. I don't care. Have it. Have yeah. a password. Knock yourself out. You need to use it. Do your thing. And then I feel like honestly, if somebody really want to know something, they're gonna get it when you ain't when you don't know anyway. They're gonna figure it they out figure anyway. It out. Especially for y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Especially because women. Figure it out. What? So it's like uh, you can have access roll to my you phone over in that bed, if, lay if your have, head back, and be like, "Get it on his I'm face." Put the face oh, right his there. Face right here. Mm. Yeah, okay, cool. Got it. I'm in. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They're gonna figure out a way. So it's like I don't. I don't got nothing to hide. So Same. you you are more than welcome to use it. Me either. So I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> All right. Well, let's jump into our real love scenario. Let's do it. A little bit of a long one this week, so but my lungs are back, so okay, we, we back. should be good. Got air. All right. So this is from Anonymous. She says, I was seeing a man who I've known for three years now. In the past, we were on and off, and we stopped talking after I expressed to him that I didn't want to continue hooking up casually. I hadn't heard from him for a year. He recently reached out to me to apologize for our past and to let me know he is interested in getting to know me and was open to the possibility of it turning into a relationship. This was a little over a month ago now. He told me he still has some personal things he was working towards, including improving his finances, but was open to exploring our connection. It might be worth mentioning that in the past, he didn't want a relationship, which is why we stopped talking. So when he came back, I was open to it because he seemed sincere. And I believe that he had done some reflecting and had worked through whatever was holding him back in the past. Since then, we've spent a lot of time together. It's been a little over a month. I really feel like we've been able to connect on a deeper level than before. But every time we've seen each other, it has been at my place. We have been intimate. But at times, he goes days without communicating with me. He hasn't taken me out on any dates since we reconnected or really made the effort to do anything special. At first, I felt guilty because I knew his financial situation and didn't want to put that pressure on him in addition to what he was already going through. But ultimately, I expressed I needed more in terms of effort and consistency and that I felt he was using his finances as an excuse. I honestly think that if he wanted to be with me, he would figure out what he needed to do to get ready financially. I didn't want his takeaway to be that I was pressuring him into a relationship, but I don't feel like we can really grow or get to know each other if we're always seeing each other in a private setting like my place or his. How do you grow with someone that you're not having experiences with or making memories with? I don't need him to be ready to jump into a relationship with me right away, but I want the effort and consistency you would put into getting to know someone. I felt an enormous amount of guilt for putting this on him and walking away. I was hoping he would take some sort of action, but I haven't heard from him since we had that conversation. Am I wrong for what I want, being that we are not in a relationship and this is still so new? Am I expecting too much too soon? Should I have been more patient? Mm, mm, mm. It's a long one, but it's a lot of things to talk about. It's a lot of things to talk about. Thank you, Anonymous, for writing and We appreciate it. Thank you so much. So where do you want to start with this, Rhonda? You know, I am... I'm open. Like you said, there's so many things to talk about. Yes. But I think the very initial theme is that this is a boomerang. This is a somebody that's spinning the block. And maybe we talk about why people do that. Like the reasons that could exist as to why people spin the block. Okay, we could talk about that. Have you spun the block? Um, Have I spun the block? 
Like I initiated jumping back into either way. Like, have you spun well, the block? People have spun the block, block on back me. On you. Okay, because <laughs> they not dumb. Okay. <laughs> back then they didn't want me. Now how they all alone me? Well, they just realized the error of their ways. Okay. So you know what I mean? Let me stop. Let me stop popping. <laughs> um, I don't have I ever spun. Yes, people have reached back out to me for sure. Um, I don't think I've ever reached back. Gotcha. I, I don't think I've ever reached back, no. Not for anything serious. No, no, no. Like, just checking in, friendly type of thing, yes. Yeah. Um, but no, never like, we were in a relationship, it went left, or we were in a thing, and then I'm like, hey, hey, big head. Yeah. No. No, no. not that future. Mm-mm, no. And it's not even because I, I, I'm a woman and I wouldn't do that. It's just because whatever happened... I, I'm pretty sure I don't necessarily want to revisit it. Mm. Like okay. I'm, I'm good. You know what I mean? Like if it ended, I, we, we probably ran, it ran its course for sure. Okay. So no, no future memes from Rhonda. No future memes. No, it's Rhonda. raining outside and I see the, t- <laughs> the, 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 the raindrops falling down the window, mm-hmm. which reminded me of the tears mm-hmm. that I shed when you left mm-hmm. me. None of that. No, no, I mean, okay. no, don't come back like that. I'm not saying the door is permanently closed on everybody from my past, but 98% Percent. of them. Okay. Absolutely. Got you. Mm-hmm. Um, So this is an interesting one for me because I've had experience with this kind of to a, a certain extent, right? Okay. Uh, both successfully and unsuccessfully. Mm-hmm. But you ask why do people spend a block? I think the number one or one reason I know with my ex-girlfriend, I tried to engaged back with her after mm-hmm. I broke up with her mm-hmm. and that was mainly off of guilt so I mm-hmm. felt guilty for how I ended things mm-hmm. and th- at that moment when I ended things I didn't think I actually did anything wrong mm-hmm. but then when I found out the error of my ways and how I did do something wrong I felt okay. extremely guilty okay. so then I felt like I had to make up for mm-hmm. what I did wrong so then I tried to engage back with her Mm. So I don't even think if I'm trying to put my mindset back in that time, if it was anything that I even missed in the relationship or anything like that, or I just felt bad for how I ended it. So I kind of wanted to just, you know, make up for that and be like, ah, you know, I'm I'm a better person than what I was. And I treated I ended things badly and all that. So I need to do better Mm -hmm. to, you know, show myself to be a better person than what I was in the past. Yeah. So that's one way Mm -hmm. that that could happen. Mm -hmm. And I experienced that. And that's not the best way to do things because you're not genuinely entering into that relationship because you actually want to enter back into that relationship. You're just doing it out of guilt. Out of guilt. Yeah. Which you should never do anything out of. Right. No. Um, So the other way of thinking about it or other reason why I feel like people spend a block is that the simple thing of that you you miss something. Mm hmm from that relationship or there was something from that relationship that you value that you want to now explore again. Yes. Now people get caught up in, Oh, this person misses me Mm -hmm. and don't know like what they miss about you, Mm -hmm. what they missed about that relationship. Cause that's the most important thing. That's the most important thing. They miss you. What do they miss? What do you miss? What is their intentions? Mm -hmm. Like, why are you here again? That's right. That's right. Because some people can miss the most shallow things about the relationship sure. and not miss you in totality, especially if they never even experienced you in totality. Mm-hmm. If what you all had in the past was something casual, well, the things that they miss are casual things, casual things. Now they may very well, cause you know, I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt. They may say, well, that was really good. So now I'm also interested in things that aren't so casual. I want to at least explore that that's very possible. But when they come back like they miss you, you got to take your mind back to, okay, well, what what did we have and what could they miss? Or you could just say, well, what do you miss? Mm-hmm. What, what do you miss about it? You know, and, and listen for what they're saying and discern whether that's honest or not honest. You may not completely know, but I think if you're paying attention to people's body language, how they communicate things, how they fumble through things. Like, well, you know, like it's it's, it's a thing where people say, like, um, well, what did you like about the movie? What's the what's the what's the easiest answer? Mm. I don't know. What's the easiest answer? Everything. Everything. <laughs> 
Oh yeah, did you even watch it? <laughs> because that's such an easy answer. Somebody so be many like, good things. Like so, I mean, just like start to finish. I mean, the whole thing. I Can't just complain. No complaints. Just just none. So if you say, well, what did, what do you miss? And they give you a very blanketed answer, like I mean everything. Oh no! Tell me more. Tell, tell, tell me more. What, what does that mean? You know, you gotta sometimes really challenge people. That is true. You, you do. You gotta know why they're here. Yeah. Um. Another. I would say so. With my situation with Bree, mm-hmm. I won't know if I would call it a spin the block mm-hmm. necessarily because we didn't necessarily have a relationship. We just right. met for a weekend yeah. and had a moment. Mm-hmm. It's more like I guess like. I don't know. You driving by someplace and you like, oh, that look nice. Next time I'm in town, I'm gonna come back and see it. Like, yeah. it wasn't like an actual like we were in a relationship like dating, and dating, dating, dating or mm-hmm. anything like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I know that it's like one a of the, micro version of a like spin a micro black. version. It's like, like you spent the house exactly. <laughs> like nothing. It it worked out, but yeah, it did, you know. It did. I, but the thing is that I remember always thinking in that time where I initially met Bree. And then I was single and then I started to be intentional about dating. I was like, yeah, the person that I'm supposed to be with, I don't feel like I met them yet. Mm. And lo and behold, I did. Yes. But I didn't think that how everything would unfold, that it would lead Bree and I back together to be Mm -hmm. in the position that we are now. Mm -hmm. So didn't know. But the thing that I do know when it comes to spending the block is that we were in two completely different spaces than from when we initially met. Yes. Yes. And that that growth, that change is from the people that I have seen at work, even the Amanda episode, which we were just talking about. She mm-hmm. talked about her relationship with Devon, mm-hmm. how they had to do the work. Yes. Because um, I think she said she met him when he was 19, when they were like young yeah, in college. Yeah, in college. Yeah. And now they're grown, like, you know, over 35, like, mm-hmm. you know, grown folks. And there was yeah. a lot of work that had to be done in order to get to a point mm-hmm. to where we can be back together. So make sure you're putting in that work if you spend the block. That's what I For see sure. as the most important thing. That is like literally one of my favorite parts of your life love story is knowing the kind of the behind the scenes of the work that you were doing you know I did did not know Brie yeah but I know like I remember it like it was yesterday this like reckoning that you were having of like it was almost like watching maturation live it was like all right yeah (laughs) you know I know I've been coming in here and telling this story and enjoying this this the life of a single bachelor But like, I want something better for my life. I want deeper purpose when it comes to love and relationships. And, you know, I'm going to abstain from sex. And we were like, this was at our office. It was like a bust out loud. It was like, (laughs) boy, now you you jumping too far in the deep end. Maybe you should baby step it. And maybe you should just like, I don't know, just Just date one girl. Jump in the deep end, no life jacket, no nothing. You just... extreme like okay dre you're you're trying to be mature whatever um but you were like no like and and you know i won't get into all the details because it it was like multiple conversations over time but you were like you shocked the hell out of me because you were very serious about it and you really committed to it and it was like i'm gonna do this it's gonna unlock a deeper relationship with god like i feel like it's gonna make me be a better like man it's gonna help me like grow up I'm 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 gonna do this, and it was like I don't want you to fail, but I'm over here like <laughs> all right. And and so when the spin the block, not so much spin the block happened with Bree, I just remember this trepidatious like we're I'm gonna see her and we're gonna spend time together, but I am very different than yeah. when we met, however long ago it was. And I was like, I think it's gonna be fine. I really do. I think y'all had um, a great moment when you when you met the first time with your friends, and it's like. Maybe she's different too, Mm -hmm. you know, or maybe she'll welcome that. You didn't spend enough time together to fully explore the totality of who you were even then. So maybe she'll be open to who you are today. And like you said, it, it really worked itself out. So it's like the unexpected love stories are some of my favorite ones where you're, where you're not like you weren't laser focused on Brie. You were laser focused on Dre. Mm -hmm. And that allowed you to find your wife. For sure. That, that was, that was that. So, um, so yeah, I think some spin the blocks quote unquote lead to really beautiful stories. Got you. Well, how do you know that for those people who are thinking about spinning a block or experiencing that, how do you know if somebody has, or in your opinion, how do you know if somebody has really good intentions when they're coming to spin a block or they just come in, like you said, for that casual thing mm-hmm. or that, you know, shallow thing that they missed from the past relationship? Yeah, I think you have to pay attention to their actions. You cannot rest anything solely on somebody's words. And I think that's the case for 
any approach, whether it's a spin the block or a new situation, yeah. you cannot get so uh, wrapped up into what people say to you. Words matter. And I'm not a person that say they don't, but actions matter more. Do is what they're saying, aligning with what they are doing. If they say, oh, I want to come back and spend time with you. Or I want to explore deeper with you. Well, are they asking questions to learn more about you? Like, is the conversation very surface? Are they being more consistent with the time that they want to spend with you? Are they, in fact, like not just jumping to the casual things or putting you in settings where only the casual things can happen? Like in this scenario, you just always are in the house, which yields a lot of casual behaviors. Um, it has to be action based. You have to really look at what they are doing and not just what they are saying. But you also have to be sh uh, making room for them to show, you know, like you can't you also can't. Um, be closed minded or constantly put them back into that bucket of, yeah, you just want to do this or you just want to do that or you lying or you, 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 you BSing. Yeah. You have to make room for it too, but allow them to show you what they're saying is true. Yes. You can't just be like, oh, he said he want to be with me. And now you think that's really what he said because, well, people lie, guys. It's very true. They do. And I agree with your first point is that like you, you have to pay attention to their actions, but you also have past experience already. Like mm -hmm. you have, you had a, a situation with them already. Yes. So you have something to kind of base off, like base your next interaction with them off of. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what went right and what went wrong yep. and what led to those actions. So now you can kind of look at the future behaviors with mm -hmm. that person and see like, do they mimic that? Do I see growth? Are yeah. they being more consistent? Mm -hmm. Are they following up and texting more or calling more? Do they seem interested? If it's the same behavior as that it was the first time, what's the thing? Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, twice shame, shame on, on me. me. That's right. So it's like you have to learn from that past experience. And when somebody's spending a block, at least you have that to go off of mm -hmm. to know like, all right, this is something I could base this off. Yeah. But also, too. I like like we always talk about like actions speak louder than words, which is very true. Mm -hmm. But I've also learned that words do matter yeah. in how somebody says something mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Like I'm a big sports guy. I'm gonna go a sports route. Stick with me, guys. <laughs> um, All right, I got my helmet on. <laughs> uh, but I'm a I'm a Warriors fan. And I mm -hmm. like basketball. Okay. And basically they had two players that Remember the fight that we talked about? Yes. Draymond punched Draymond, Jordan Poole? Yes. yes. So basically, Draymond is up for a contract and he needs to be extended. Jordan Poole just got a contract, but people are thinking about trading him because they like both of them people on the same team. Like somebody got to go. Yes. So when they talked about Draymond as an organization, they said, we need Draymond to win championships. Mm. We need Draymond to win championships. Like we, we're not a championship team if he's not here. When it came to Jordan and people were asking, like, do you want him on a team? The general manager was like, yes, we want him here. You know, we expect him to be here for the next four years, blah, 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 blah. His contract is a four-year contract, fully guaranteed. Mm. Draymond, they said, we need him here mm -hmm. to win championships. Mm -hmm. Jordan Poole, they said, oh, yeah, we want him here. We plan yeah. for him to be here the next four years. Jordan Poole just got traded to the Washington Wizards. Just like that. Three days ago. Because they did not need <laughs> him. But in what he was saying and how he said it yep. about how he talked about both players, mm -hmm. even though it's words like the way that he said it yes. and the the way that he delivered it, it was like, OK, I can tell you, you really want Draymond, but you're OK. We're getting rid of Jordan. Mm -hmm. And I say that because in this scenario with Anonymous, you said that you haven't heard from him for a year. And he reached, he reached out to you, apologized, which I said people do stuff out of guilt. That's mm -hmm. why they spend the block. Mm -hmm. And then he said he's interested in getting to know me and was open to the possibility of it turning into a relationship. Did he not create the biggest safety net for what? himself? Did he not? He he was down there with the crochet <laughs> net. Like, I'm just going to make sure that I don't overextend myself. I'm open myself. to the possible maybe Hype, could scenario be, could maybe, I'm happen, not sure. possible could, scenario mm. that we could maybe at some point if things line up potentially if the <laughs> stars align and the, uh, like I see the north star touch the south star and, and the moon and the shine they could shine at the same yeah. time then we could possibly explore mm -hmm. what this may look like mm -hmm. that's what I heard that's what I heard too and it's like <laughs> yes actions will speak loud in words but even the way he framed it it was mm -hmm. not like I know you. Mm -hmm. We were in a situation. 
I evaluate our relationship. I'm ready to take this serious and really try at a relationship. Yeah. Not I'm open to the pot. He was probably open to the possibility before. <laughs> Who got tell you that, you know, These words you got to pay attention with, That's with the intentions. You got to know, like you got to pay attention to every part of it. You but do. when somebody is cryptic, even in their speech, like, I mean, no respect to liars, but at least the people that can lie and then their actions show something opposite. That's one thing. Like, but they'll lie. They'll speak it up. Like, I love you. You mm-hmm. are everything I mm-hmm. need. Like, but then the actions don't match up. That's one thing. But if somebody can't even lie to you. Nope. Can't even lie to you good. They can't even lie to you good. Because they just like, nah, this is just not how I nah, feel. Just, 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 <laughs> I don't care. Like, uh, <laughs> so I, I ain't going to lock myself into this mm-hmm. lie. Like, Mm-mm. I'm open to the possibility of maybe doing this. Yeah. You got that cryptic stuff. Like, like I told y'all a few episodes ago, when somebody's into you and really mm-hmm. wants to be with you, it ain't a guessing game. You don't got to think about it. No. They they make it obvious that they want to be serious with you. For sure. For this sure. whole cryptic talk. Mm-mm-mm. It's it's a lot. <laughs> it was it was that, and then it was also um, with some people. Some women might, uh, if if they were in her situation, have heard the part about you know he was still dealing with some things. Yeah. One of them being his finances. He shared that, and you have a group of people that would have been like, "Oh, he's being honest. He's telling me the truth about where he is." financially and and that he may not be able to show up um with with the ability to financially contribute to the process of dating again right he mm-hmm. he lays that out and someone would say that's very honest but someone else could say with discerning eyes that that was also a safety net that he's putting that out there where it's like listen I'm open to the possibility but I ain't really going to be able to take you nowhere I ain't really going to be able to buy you nothing. I ain't really going to be able to show you a good time. You know, whether that's with a little bit of money or a lot of bit of money, I'm not. So us exploring the possibility of potentially getting into a relationship is mostly going to look like communicating on the phone, uh, communicating in person, but not like out anywhere where we really have to spend money. And and we have said this so many times on this podcast that you do not need a lot of money to be effective with dating. You don't. Now, it's expensive out here in this world. It is. If you if, if you don't think so, tell me what city and state you live in so I can look at uh <laughs> moving there. But it's very expensive um to to date and I and I think most men take the bigger brunt of taking on the financial responsibility sure. of dating. But there are so many things that you can do for free. There are so many things that you can do for very little money. Like you can go to museums. They are free. Yes. You can have picnics. They're not free. Technically, you don't got to pay to get in the park, but you probably got to buy a little bit of stuff, a mm-hmm. little, you know, some juices, some fruits and whatever. But you can have a picnic for $50 or less very easily. Very sure. You can have ice cream dates. They're $20, $25 if you go into like a fancy ice cream spot. And if you go into your run of the mill generic place Mm -hmm. she be talking 10 bucks for for two ice cream cones so there are ways to have dating experiences that are not expensive so the fact that he's coming in already telling you straight up and down i just am not in a good spot financially and i'm open to the potentials and the possibilities of maybe getting in a relationship with you i mean he was really the flags were there exactly the flags were there and I think I have only gotten better at this at this point in my life because I have had enough of these experiences where now I'm like, mm, okay, well, I'm going to just see what you do. Yeah. I'm going to see what you do because I'm not going to give you the playbook on how to do it. That's cool. I appreciate you telling me that you're having some financial struggles. So perhaps I'm not going to expect to go to the nicest and fanciest of places with you. But if you take not being able to go to the fancy places as doing absolutely nothing, I'm not going to be able to do that. Yeah. Not I'm I'm I see that as a I'm good on you because the effort the effort is what matters. The effort is what matters. If I can't easily wow you with a $500 date, then I am going to take a little more time to wow you with a $20 date. Mm-hmm. I'm going to bring uh something cute maybe that I wrote on a cute piece of paper because I couldn't just take you to a fancy place and let the restaurant I- impress you with a fancy bottle of wine. Now I'm going to take some extra time to do some extra steps so you could be like, damn, 
he really like is trying. Like yeah. you are trying and trying goes such a long way. So I think she just got relatively easily duped yeah. with words. Yeah. Very easily duped. And so many people do yes. get easily duped with words because you get caught up on what was or what could be instead of focusing on what is for sure yes that's what we as humans it's, it's a human thing it we is. get caught up in that so mm-hmm, much mm-hmm. um the optimism of yes. what possibly could happen mm-hmm. but i want to stick on that point the financial point that you're talking about yes because listen man i, I talked about chemistry and compatibility mm-hmm. that's like i said gonna be one of my staples now yes. is that the chemistry is great but compatibility is like the alignment of life and the way that you live, the lifestyles, values, all those things like that. Mm-hmm. Like you got to have yourself in a position where you have some type of financial stability, I think, entering into a relationship. And I mean this for like grown folks, especially as a man, but for grown folks. Because if you kids, I, I'll say kids, kids like 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, everybody broke. Yeah. For the most part, you know what I mean? Like we yeah. first getting our first jobs. We mm-hmm. all may still live at home. Like, so we going through the struggle together. Mm-hmm. Our ice cream dates are ice cream dates because we both know that we both ain't mm-hmm. at that level. That's the times when we were still tripling up in a hotel room bed. Yeah. Like we was <laughs> doing every little thing mm-hmm. we could to save money to experience the different things that we could experience because we was all in the same boat. That's right. So I do. Eating under- before you go out. Yeah. Eating like, before you go I, out. I remember doing that when I was in my early 20s. Like I got to eat before before we go outside because I only uh, got about 25 and if I get a drink and some fries <laughs> that's all I got so I got I got to eat some noodles or some, something inside of this house before I go outside side note <laughs> I was out yesterday mm-hmm. and this girl Lord, we was at a table, had a bottle, stuff like that. My friend stole the party. Shout out to Great Energy Group, Gabby and Marcus. Uh, okay. They throw a great party lady in the city in DC so come and uh you know support support support. best party in dc but anyways we're sitting there and some girl comes up to my cousin and she's like just talking randomly young girl she got braces and everything okay and she was talking and she was like saying stuff and she was like oh you're not drunk you're not drunk like you gotta get lit like what you you ain't drinking and he turned to me i'm like where did these people come from Mm -hmm. he's like tell her i had like three long hours already like i'm good and she was like nah you're not drunk she picks up the bottle and gives him a shot and it's like yo like you gotta take a shot like and she was like your friend too like and she picks up the bottle again pours a shot and she tried to get it to me and i was like nah i'm good and she was like you're not lit i'm like i'm I'm good. Yeah. And then she was like, oh, okay, I'll just give it to my friend, pour herself a shot. They took a shot. And then she was like, oh, we lit and blah, blah, blah. She was like, I'll be right back. Like, I'm about to go to the bathroom. She never came back. And I was like, that's that young b- brokenness. Wait, do you that, see like, my, do you see my, <laughs> if y'all are watching my face, and I'm like, is this your bottle in your section? This is the great energy bottle because uh, they have a Lobos. Um, like deep, like sponsorship. Deal, yeah, sponsorship mm-hmm. and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So it was them. And they like weren't really like paying attention or anything like that. But I was looking at my cousin like you what what what? what? That was very much a broke vibe. Like I'm gonna get shots. Like I'm girl, a- watch this. <laughs> watch this. <laughs> this is how you do it. Watch <laughs> this. Watch this. <laughs> like, and I was just like, Shorty came over and finessed her. Finesse. But finesse herself two, two shots. shots. That is crazy. For her and her friend. Yep. Because she. But was when like, you're young, I, that's the type of stuff you be on. Yeah. Can we get a burger and fries? And can you cut the burger in, in four, <laughs> please? <laughs> So I feel like if you dating and you're, you know, still a kid, you're still young and everybody mm-hmm. around, like, that's just the, yeah. that's just what we'll be on. Yes. Like, then you, I understand that. Yes. But if you grown mm-hmm. to where everybody around got their own place, got their own car, paying their own bills, like, yes. you got to have some type of financial stability if you want to enter into the dating space. Because we all know mm. what one of the main reasons for divorce is. Okay. It's financial issues. Yes. I actually think that is still the number one reason. I'm going to look it up while you talk. Yeah, like that. That So you can't, especially as a man, when you're supposed to be courting mm-hmm. and doing things um, and making your woman feel special. As Rhonda said, you don't have to spend a whole bunch of money, but you have to have some type of extra income like mm-hmm. to in order to be able to do some things and mm-hmm. do nice things and do things um, that are special. And especially if you're dating somebody who is um used to a certain level of living or a certain level or standard of living when it comes to the things that they like to experience. 
experience. Yes. So unless you have your your finances together, mm-hmm. uh, you have other focuses that you need to focus on. Yeah. Other investments that you need to make. Your investment shouldn't probably be into a person probably at this point. It should be investing into yourself to get a point to where you either make more money or get to a point to where you can be more financially stable. Agreed. Agreed. And I was wrong. Finances is the fifth top, the top fifth reason. So it has changed. And Lord, this is going to be a whole nother episode. So I ain't going to go there about (laughs) what the number one reason is right now. But yes, it is. It is still in the the top five. It's in the top five reasons. And and I agree with you uh, that not having financial stability, the fact that you would even be prioritizing dating um, and stability just means you have to have discretionary income. That's that's, if you have no wiggle room, like literally every dollar you make has to go to every dollar you spend. That means you have no discretionary income. Therefore, you don't have you don't even have room to date yourself. You don't even have room to probably like get yourself something nice. You know what I mean? Like you are you are doing the bare necessities and it's nothing wrong with that. So we're not shaming anybody for having financial issues or financial um, instability because it happens. And some things thrust you into that. You could have been stable, but then your job closed or. You had to help a family member. They got sick. Anything. We're anything. talking about prioritizing. That's right. That's, That's what we're right. talking about. You don't have room for the the luxuries of life, which is frolicking around town and dating or dating multiple people. You don't have the luxuries of that if you don't have discretionary income. It's some weeks. Listen, I and I do pretty well for myself, but it's some weeks based on my financial responsibilities or some months I'm, I might be trying to save more or I might be trying to make a purchase. I do not have as much discretionary income. So I have to say to my friends, I can't come this time. You know, I got to I got to hang back right now. I've got to lock in to what I'm doing right now. I don't feel any shame about it at all because I know I'm making a good decision for myself. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not going to overextend myself or rob Peter to pay Paul just to have a good time or for a cheap thrill. I don't need that. So a man that would be dating me again, I always bring up my age because a lot of that is relative to my advice. For sure. If you are my age around like a little younger or a little older and you tell me straight off the off the top, you you are financially struggling. (laughs) That doesn't make you shallow either. I want people to understand that. Like we always when we think of different things that we help to support each other or filling holes in a relationship Mm -hmm. and trauma and all that stuff. And we, you know, say when people have trust issues or anger issues, like Mm -hmm. these are the things you should avoid and look out for. Somebody's financially struggling and you know, the certain life that you want to live, what you imagine, um, the things that you want to do. And Mm -hmm. that person isn't at that level. That doesn't make you shallow for not wanting to enter into that relationship because of their financial situation. Yeah. Because that is when you are into, we always talk about marriage is, a partnership yeah and there is legal implications to that if you choose to go down that route and that is part of that is tying in finances absolutely and somebody can drag you down like money is not everything no at all but no. it is the means to which we provide for ourselves right. and enjoy experiences mm-hmm. and do a lot of things that we do so mm-hmm. if somebody is putting stress on the pockets let me i'll show you a stressful relationship and if, if you show if I show you a uh, stressful financial situation yes. in a relationship, like yes. you're going to see that that disseminate and be all over the relationship. Mm-hmm. If there is stress in the finances of a relationship, literally you took the words right out of my <laughs> mouth. It is not that I am above dating someone that makes less than me because I would date someone that makes less than me. For sure. I really would. But it is really about how you are managing your finances. But it's also knowing how much finances stress people out it is if you don't feel comfortable financially and this is not a gender thing because i think again this becomes <laughs> a when a man don't make money he don't feel like a man when an adult is struggling to make the ends meet it makes them feel bad i don't care if yeah. you are a man or a woman if i have to work for myself and take care of myself and so much is happening in my life that that becomes hard i will be stressed out Mm -hmm. That's not like it's not like women who make money are sitting over here struggling to to pay to pay bills. And they're just like, it feels great. No, it's stressful as hell to not be able to do that. So I get it. And again, I'm reasonable totally. But 
this may not be the time for you to be prioritizing the the cost of dating. And it doesn't mean we can't be friends. It doesn't mean that, that I can't be supportive or try to be encouraging to you. But I just don't think, like she said, I would want to put pressure on you by expecting you to do things that you literally financially can't do. I yeah. could very well still get to know you, get to understand your heart. But I think I might be getting an alternative version of you because you may be so stressed out, stressed out about money. So I don't know if I really want to do that. So I just think it's a dating is a that's not a rich man sport, but it does require you to usually have a little money, especially once you get to a certain age. It requires you to have some means to do that. Yeah, that's all. That's all and I'm I, saying. And I feel like, too, you got to be aware of people who try to set a low bar. Mm-hmm. And they try to make it seem as if they're going to try to improve on that. But what they really are is just saying this is the bar. That's it. That's it. That's it. So like even in the future, six months down the road and you're like, yo, like what's going on? I told you I didn't have a, a good financial situation, but I know that was six months ago. Like what would have what's, what's happened, happened in between this time to improve that? Mm-hmm. And then it'll be like a look like. I told you my situation and it's like they were telling you that not to improve on it, but to set that low bar Mm -hmm. to say, this is just where I'm at. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you want to be with me, this is where it's going to be. And what they're hoping is that you let go of some of your standards Mm -hmm. and you drop down to that level. And if you are able to drop down to the level of where they are, then that's when the possibility of a relationship can begin to open up. That's right. When Uh they don't have to raise who they are, you drop who you are. Mm hmm. And now the open and the possibilities, they just become. Yeah. But if I got to be better, I don't think this could work. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Listen, well, thinking about like money and dating, you know, I'm sure that there are people who feel like you don't really do like are all the activities. Do they really matter? Does like going to dinners and lunches and hiking and museums, all these things that festivals and concerts, all the things that you might do to date. Do those activities really mean anything in the dating process do you need to have those experiences to learn about a person yes they matter (laughs) they do they do matter Uh because when you're in a relationship with somebody especially if you're working towards marriage or some type of level of monogamy Mm -hmm. um it's not just about living life with somebody it's about experiencing life with somebody like everybody wants to experience life with the person that they're with like a lot of us we have our jobs we go to work Mm -hmm. and then we may eat dinner do all these things but like outside of these regular schedules what do we do in that time Mm -hmm. we want to experience life Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like i don't want to just be sitting here just floating by with somebody i want to do something with somebody or Mm -hmm. have experiences with somebody um and that comes with activities i talked to i may have talked about it on the podcast recently how brie and i have just got to a point to where we just are doing like random things Mm -hmm. random things that we would never do like just looking up stuff and like ah let's just try it yeah like one wednesday like a few wednesdays ago i took her to a trivia comedy sketch night at dc improv on like a wednesday and it was basically like a sketch Mm -hmm. and you had to like it was a murder mystery comedy show okay so i want to go to a murder mystery um thing i've i've been saying that for years and i still haven't gone and it was random completely different crowd from what we're normally used to right but it was just like random and it was fun and it was something that we could say we experienced together that was just Mm -hmm. different like we went to a women's soccer game that we had tickets to and was just like let's just go to this like random Wednesday Bree don't know anything about soccer I wouldn't even say we're necessarily fans of the team we were just mm-hmm. like let's just go let's and just do something. go and just do something yeah. and let's just experience new things so we could be like oh remember that time we did this mm-hmm. remember that time we did that and yeah. I remember how fun that was or maybe we should try this and those experiences are so fun like the random ones like even this today actually we're going to an Ed Sheeran concert because we got tickets that should be and I'm like that should be cool yeah I may know one or two maybe three maybe but he good he's he's good and it's something different that we'll just be like remember that time we went to that Ed Sheeran concert or Mm -hmm. who'd you like I always like asking people that question like what's the best concert you ever went to because sometimes you'll be surprised by some people's answers and Mm -hmm. they'll be like you know who's really good Mm -hmm. who I wasn't even expecting X, Y, and Z. Yes. Or like Ed Sheeran. Or like mm-hmm. when we did Charm City Live, Stokely, I was like, oh, I We were he, blown away. I and I mean, I like knew this. he was super talented, but I was like, wait a minute. Like, oh, he was dancing like at his yes. age. And I was like, this is a good show. Like, 
I feel like good shows are like when you don't even gotta know the music, but and you're you just have like, a blast. oh, this is just good. Like I don't Agreed. even know the songs, but this is like good. It's a vibe. So I say all that to say is that experience is like that's the thing that I will treasure mm-hmm. with my wife mm-hmm. when I look back and when I get old. The experiences are the things that I would treasure with my kids. Yes. That time that we took them to Disney World or that mm-hmm. time that we dropped them off at college and did dinner and did all that. Mm-hmm. Like these are going to be the things that you remember and look back on when you're, you know, later yeah. in life and the things that you'll cherish. So to say, like, I don't feel like we have to do any activities or anything like that. Like, mm-hmm. I just think that's kind of, you know taken away from the relationship or uh, selling the relationship short. I agree. And I think the other side of that is certain activities can reveal certain things about the person that you're, that you're dating that they may not, you may not see through just sitting around talking to them. You might find out your person competitive as I don't okay, know what. Okay, like, like, like if you it's go. Just, ooh, I just skipped you, baby. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, it's just, oh no. <laughs> right. Like, you might see how creative they are if you do something like a paint and sip. For sure. Where you can see, like, you know, wow, they, they actually are really, really good at this. Mm-hmm. Or like you said, they are competitive. Let's say you go hiking and it's like. All right, well, let's race, you know, like that becomes you you get to learn those things. For sure. But also sometimes like you learn of how courteous a person is or is not, how chivalrous a person is or is not. Very you true. don't necessarily see these things if you're just on the phone all the time or if you're just like on FaceTime all the time. I want to see how you treat servers. I want to see how you treat people who are in position to help us. I want to see if you tr- if you um are generous in your energy towards them and even even in your, you know, tipping of of them, you know, how you ask for things, how you don't ask for things. I want to see all of these things and I cannot experience that if the only way we're getting to know each other is by sitting in your house talking all day long. Yes. That's important because, you know, I say this all the time. Look in the camera. I'm a sapiosexual. It turns me on. Words and conversations definitely are, are impactful, but I need both. I need I need actions. And words. Yes. For it to make sense. That is so important. Like you said, how people interact with people. I don't want you to be one of them dogs where I got to put you away when people come over the house because you don't know how to act. Because you don't know how to act. (laughs) Exactly. Hold on real quick. Let me look. Let me me, uh, look. I got one of them dogs, (laughs) y'all. Just a little bit. It's ink. God, hey, baby. Mommy, love you. Um, He's just a very excitable dog, you know, and he's a lot of energy for people that aren't used to animals that do that. He's sweet, but he needs a moment to calm down because he's just like, ah, people, hey, hey, you know. I mean like he's a lot so that is important to how people interact with people like mm-hmm. I don't, are you one of them people who will send that joint that food back like three times my grandma was one of them people she'll send that bacon back three times if it wasn't crispy enough and I'm like they done dropped that lick that and everything like to your no bacon shade at this point. I like, want you to I want to <laughs> know if you say salmon or salmon I want to hear it <laughs> I want to know, you know, I want, I want, I want to know when you get the bill, if you'd be like, well, I got to pay tax on the liquor. I want to see that, you know, I want to know what's up with you, you know, just certain things where I'm like, huh. But also on the positive side of that, there's so many things that a person can do when you're outside and having outside experiences that can just be attractive, right? Like when a man is, when he, when he just quietly smoothly adjust you to the inside when y'all walking down the street some listen grab that hip who, i do that all the time Bree. who baby boy when you when you you know holding the door not just for me because obviously i expect you to do that for me but you're holding it for maybe another woman that you see coming through the door or you speak to people when we're walking through a place you might be like, mm-hmm. hey how you doing you know i I enjoy watching a person, learning about a person just by observing them. I very much enjoy that. And and so I can't get the full scope of that if we sitting in your house all the time and you sitting in my house all the time. So I'm with you, Dre. Activities matter. They matter. They do. They matter. <laughs> um, one of the things that like kind of bummed me out a little bit about this scenario was that she shared that they were intimate. And... They were on and off for three years. They didn't speak for one. Mm -hmm. And then he came back, apologized. And just a little over a month after he did that, you're writing in to Real Love Scenario, which we appreciate your writing, of course. For sure. But in less than 30 days, you became sexually intimate with this person 
all based on words. All based on words. Sex. Who oh, goodness. I, let, let me pose the question first and foremost, especially from someone who made a commitment to wait to, yes. for, for marriage, for sex. Is sex intoxicating? And if so, how does it cloud judgment in these types of dynamics? Uh, yeah. Yes, yes. It is intoxicating. Mm-hmm. Um, that's why I chose to ma- wait for marriage is mm-hmm. that I... People probably heard this, but I, I felt like this was the biggest decision I was going to make in my life. This was going to be the mother of my kids, mm-hmm. my, my biggest influence, my life partner. And I wanted to go into that decision with a sober mind and not mm-hmm. be intoxicated by anything physical. And I think that things, not that they have changed, but I feel like even it's funny that like I always reference the Bible sometimes, like Solomon said, it's nothing new under the sun. Like mm-hmm. people, technology has changed stuff like that. But we as people, we behave the same way yeah. that we've always behaved, mm-hmm. um, especially when it comes to sex and mm-hmm. stuff like that and the influences of sex. Mm-hmm. But you would think with the world becoming so sexualized now um, and people seeing like, you know, women having sex, men having sex and it being so freely accepted yes. that people would detach themselves from I guess the seriousness of what they think sex means with somebody, Mm -hmm. but still now, even today, when you have that moment with somebody for some reason in your head, it makes you feel closer to them than probably what you actually are Mm -hmm. in reality. So you start to think like, Oh, this person really, really likes me because they did this action with me. Or this person really, really cares about me Mm -hmm. because they did this action about me or, or did this action with me. And you start to create this thought process in your head of what this person feels about you just because they shared this moment sexually with you. So then where your mind goes with that is like, you're selling yourself this green dream of optimism and what this could be, mm-hmm. or they wouldn't have done this if they didn't feel something or some type of feeling or some type of attraction towards me. Mm-hmm. And you start to sell yourself on this idea in your head. And then it's combating with the logic that's, that's actually existing in the reality. It's taking over the logic. So you're like, all right, logically, this is what's happening. But then this emotion like it's taking over me. What's that song? Mm-hmm. Emotions. Mm-hmm. Like it's taking just oh, like that's yeah. real. It's like it's cloud. It, that's the true mm-hmm. definition of clouding mm-hmm. judgment. It's like driving in fog. The road is there. It's clear. But now this fog comes and it's like, you don't know. You can't mm-hmm. really see, you mm-hmm. know, the road is there. But it's like it's so cloudy that it's like, I don't really know like what what's really going on so that's that's preach. my thought process preach on it. preach 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 and and <laughs> and uh if you if this is your your first time you you if you, this is your first time listening to real love scenario you know you'll you you learn dre's story but you'll also understand that i'm the opposite where i would not necessarily wait for marriage to have sex however however big old however mm-hmm rushing into it too quickly before you have enough time to understand who someone is to the point where you feel really comfortable being vulnerable enough to give your body to them. I I hold hard, I hold hard and fast on that, that when you are dating someone, listen, it's people out here who have slept with someone on the first night and married them later. You know, I get it. If that's your story, if that's what you want to do, it's y'all's bodies do with it what you want. But in this particular dynamic, where you were already having a casual situation. Y'all were basically friends with benefits for three years on and off. And then this person spins the block and says, in order to get back into your life, he says, I want something more this go round because you cut him off three a year mm-hmm. ago because you didn't want to keep doing the casual thing. So you already told him, if you're not going to be serious about me, you, you can't have access to me. That's what you said. And all he had to do was tell you that he wanted to be serious with you. And you opened up the door and you opened up the door and you opened up your legs. And I don't say that to be judgmental at all. Listen, I have been there. There's there is there are just some things certainly that I haven't experienced, but there are other things that I've, I've experienced as Amanda talked about. You know, I've had clumsy dating experiences where I was like, I, pr- I really knew better, but I still moved forward and made a bad decision. Mm-hmm. And now that is telling me after getting through that bad decision, I have to reflect. 
I have to do better for myself, which is why I feel the way I feel about it today. I will not casually or haphazardly have a sexual relationship with anybody today because I want more for myself. I want someone who is willing to show me without the intoxication of sex that they can be serious about me, that they don't need to have my body in order to um, see my worth that they don't have to experience me sexually to be willing to spend time with me. If you are requiring my sex with you as a ticket of admission to spend time with me, then we won't we won't go far because that's that's not the admission to have access to me. It's just not. I don't need sex in that capacity. I'm okay with waiting because I want to do it with a person who I feel deserves it. I want him to earn my body and I want to earn his body. I think exchanging that energy, like you said, it's powerful. Even if you don't think it is because it's, oh, we just having a little sexy, flashy thing. Sexual exchange of energy is extremely powerful. It just is. There's so much passion that is happening in that moment. Um, you are naked, literally, like you don't have anything on your body. So this person is seeing something that the vast majority of people don't see. So once I understood that and and clumsied my way through certain situations, it's like now I cannot do it. I cannot do it. And especially in this dynamic, especially yeah. when someone is saying, yeah, we just used to sleep together back in the day. Now I want more. Oh, well, you most certainly going to have to show me that you want more before you have sex because you already know what it's like. You've already experienced it. And the last thing I'm going to say on this particular thing is I'm going to toot my own horn because I know for a fact that the sexual, um, my sexual chemistry is is good. Like you're going to enjoy this. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, I'm not wasting my goodness on something that's 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 casual. I'm yeah. just not this this too bomb to just be giving it to any and everybody, okay? I have to give it to someone who has earned it. Yeah. And and I want a man who's coming with that same vibe. Like, girl, this this going to blow your mind. I'm like, don't worry about it. I can wait. If yeah. it's that good, I can wait. No, nah, I agree. That's yeah. that's great points. Yeah, man. I, I, mm -mm. I want to... So hopefully I can get through this because I have this thought in my head and I'm hoping that I convey it clearly. I'm sure you will. Um, so I think anonymous side, there has to be a level of accountability on her side mm -hmm. that you chose to do this a month in because you really wanted to do it. Mm -hmm. Not because he tricked you. If you fold a month in, a month and a half in, like that's what you wanted to do. And I think that there is this, what I believe is a societal or just a human nature thing or societal norm that has happened to where women have, or they, a lot of women see sex as a bargaining chip to a certain extent. Mm. And I, let me try to break this down in a way to hopefully people can understand that. Hopefully I'm making sense. So when I look at even like back in the days, like let's say back in like biblical days before Christ and stuff like that, like a lot of times, like I always say, sex is the reason kingdoms have fallen. Men have lost their life because it always has been able to be used as a way to influence men, mm -hmm. a way to get men to do something that you need them to do, um, a way to gain power, whether that's forcing marriage, having a child, binding these families together. It's always been seen not a lot as, as like just a form of love or action of love and intimacy for a lot of times. It's a lot of times been seen in our society as some type of bargaining chip or negotiating tool or anything like that. So I feel like now still it's ingrained in some people's head that if I am giving up sex, then you now owe me something back. Mm -hmm. And it's like, no, a man doesn't just because you had sex with him. He doesn't owe you anything back. That's your choice. And I feel like in this situation, she gave it up or got intimate with him a month and a half in. And now because she feel like she did that, he now owes her something back. Mm -hmm. And it's like if you are having sex, I feel like you need to make that decision because that's what you ultimately want to do. That's what you feel like you want to do. You're comfortable with that decision because of what the action actually is of that pleasurable experience. But you can't enter into having sex with somebody like now I gave you this. You have to give me now this back. Because yes. if you're going into it with that mindset, you're always going to be disappointed because 
you're trying to put your logic and way of thinking on somebody else who may not feel and think the same way that you do. Mm -hmm. So I just think it's important in this, like take accountability for yourself. It's like, okay, yeah, you know, he put himself in this situation, but honestly, everything he was saying wasn't really lining up with what I said I want, but I wanted to have sex with him. Honestly, I probably missed that a little bit too. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to believe him when he said those things, even though logically I know there probably wasn't the case, but now I feel like because I got intimate with him that now he owes me something because I didn't let him back in. Mm -hmm. And it's like, he doesn't owe you anything. I mean, it, 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 it seems like it's a consensual situation that you enter into that consensually with him. And that was your choice to make. Yeah. He gave you all the signs from what I see with the way he said things, how he may have acted in the past that it still may not have been a serious thing. Mm-hmm. And you had the option to wait it out a little bit before you gave him that to see if what he said is if his actions actually match that, mm-hmm. but you made a decision yeah. to be intimate with him in that moment. And in that you just can't be upset or, I mean, you may you be upset. Be. Yeah. Yes. You could be upset, but understand that the reality is, is that mm-hmm. nobody owes you anything for doing that. Yeah. They don't. They don't. I, I've said this before. I don't know if this is going to become one sense? of my, it does. Okay. Oh, a hundred percent. It, 100% makes sense. Um, I've said this before. I don't know if I'm going to call it one of my cornerstones, but the exchange for sex is sex. The currency for sex is sex. Yeah. In my world. And I think most people should try to adopt that as an understanding. I under, I, I, I've heard, I don't want to say I get it because I disagree with it wholeheartedly, that it, that sex a woman's sex is the exchange for money or the exchange for that's effort what people, that's what has been taught it seems exactly. like or from a society standpoint that it's an exchange for something something greater and really to, for me the exchange of sex is sex alternatively i will say or not even alternatively but really alternatively to what you said i agree with you that she has to hold some accountability for moving too quickly in this you're you even down to the questioning, which I'll get into when we when we wrap up to give really our final thoughts. But people can and will use whatever they can allow, whatever you allow them to use to manipulate you. You said that you all were connecting on a deeper level. Based on what? <laughs> Based on what? Based on conversations? That's cool. But again, you got to put those words, you got to p- test them to the fire. So if all he had to do was say nice things and make it sound like he was connecting with you on a deeper level, if he was asking you certain questions, again, those questions could have been great. He could have very well been trying to learn about you, but you cannot skip ahead by letting those words become the the, the key that unlocks the door of sex because women will most of the time, not all women, not all the time, uh, they will tend to feel so much guilt when you give sex up too fast when you have sex and because you were expecting something in exchange you would then be sitting there like damn I shouldn't have gave that to him I've been there I know that feeling of like I've I really got gypped yeah I got I got I got duped I really sat here and hung on to every word that came out of this person's mouth hoping that it was the truth but never actually putting it to to detest I never put the words to test I just was like it sounded good it made me feel good and I was hopeful that once we were intimate that that energy would keep up what life will learn you in these types of experience will learn you is that you should not you should not do that you have to let someone show you you have to require them to show you You cannot have standards and not stand on them. You have to put up your boundaries to protect yourself because there are people that are going to come really close to you, come as close as they can get to you and not be in a position to protect you. They have no desire to do that. They are in your space to use you and manipulate you. And you've got to become sharp and keen to know when people are doing that so that you can be like, you know what? He keeps on saying that he wants to be with me. But he never prioritizes uh, communicating with me daily. Hmm. Okay. Mental note. You know, he says that he wants a relationship, but we never really have conversations about future planning or forward life. He never asks me like what cities I would want to live in or if I want kids. But if he really wants to be in a relationship with me, would, wouldn't he be asking me those types of things? 
Probably. He says that he wants us to spend more time together, but he never plans dates. He never prioritizes spending time with me outside of my home. He never even has enough. And ladies, these men do exist. He never even has enough um, respect for himself to say, I don't want to keep coming to your house. Because your house is too comfortable. Your house, your home is a comfortable space. I don't want to sit up in your house all day or for hours upon hours where you feel comfortable, I feel comfortable, and this is an environment for intimacy. He never stops stops that. He never says, let's let's get out. Let's get some fresh air. I don't want to do that because I just don't even want to put myself in a situation to be tempted. That was another thing that I remembered about like when you and Bree were first reintroducing um, th- this serious dating into your lives, you avoided certain dynamics physically yep. when you are trying to avoid having sex. You try to minimize the temptations as much as possible. There are men who will say, no, nah, baby, I don't want I, I don't want I don't want that. You know, I want to experience your mind. I want to experience your heart. And I don't want the temptation of your body. I can clearly see it inside your clothes. But if I'm in your house, you might decide to have on a little bra top and and boy shorts, something you wouldn't wear outside. So let's go outside. Let's go outside. Listen, real lovers, y'all taking notes. Y'all got the notepad out, the pen and paper. Rhonda dropping some gems. She trying to tell y'all something. You guess you got to slow down, man. She, she trying to tell y'all something. For, number one, I preached about it a few episodes ago. Maintaining your value. Mm-hmm. Stop dropping your value. That's right. Like you got to maintain your value, and y'all know I'm a sports. I'm a sports guy, so I'm gonna give you one more this episode. <laughs> I'm gonna put two in there. If a player underperforms in a previous year, mm. do you think the organization gives them a new contract just by them saying, "You know, I worked really hard this summer, and you know, I put in a lot of work. My jump shot got better. My layup got better. You know, I'm better at setting picks. I'm a better rebounder." Money, please. My no, friend cooking, they y'all. wait for you to perform. That's correct. And then they judge the performance and say, okay, I see the growth. There we go. Now you can get a new contract. There we go. There we go. Cooking. But you valuing yourself so low that you taking the words and just like, okay. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. You can have you it. You can have it. You can have it. They can ain't have done it. nothing. They ain't done nothing. But say what they... What they think you want to hear. You want to hear. We That's talked right. about it with the baby episode the one time is like how men could use the relationship with your child to manipulate you because sometimes it's just about whatever is available to manipulate. That's what I'm going to use. That's it. That's it. Cooking, Whew. cooking, cooking. That's in my amigo's voice. Cooking, <laughs> cooking, cooking. Listen, that's all you know. So, baby, I, I, I hate this for you. Uh, I, I really do because. And, and I hate it for him. He he re, he should be uh, held accountable, obviously, for not necessarily really wanting what he said he wanted. He 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 said he was open to the possibilities of a relationship. When truth be told, he probably just missed having sex with you. Yo. He probably just missed the sex that y'all had. Mm-hmm. And he wanted to have sex again. And he believed that if he just called you and said, hey, I miss having sex. Can 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 we kick it and have sex? That you wouldn't that go for you that. Wouldn't go, you wouldn't go for that. And if you wouldn't go for that, great. He will go away. But that's the thing. He will go that, find somebody else that he can just get some sex from. That's what I think. Some people just have to be in tune with their sexuality and understand what they really want. Like I feel like in your mind, you're like, I have to hold myself to a higher standard and I can't just go back into that just from a sexual standpoint because that's just not who I am and that's not what I want to represent. But if he gives me some inkling of, oh, I want to be in a relationship, possibly, then it that makes, makes me feel, feel better, better to mm-hmm. be in tune with yourself sexually to where every sexual decision that you make is something that you know what you wanted to get out of it. You know why you did it mm-hmm. and you are OK with your decision, whether yeah. that's something casual or something serious. So, so if you know that, man, sex was great with him and that is kind of what I want. Yeah. You can be like, listen. I I don't want nothing serious still. You say your financial situation messed up. Like I will have to see more actions with any, with what you talking about, open to a possible relationship. But if you want to get back into doing whatever, then come we, here, like, bring that nigga. Ain't that a- <laughs> <laughs> just, just be honest you with yourself. Know that's what you want. So then your expectations are on that level. And it's like, boom, and sometimes that mess a dude up because dudes be like, oh, she, that's all she wanted. Mm-hmm. I remember I met a girl like that where she was like, I feel like you would be like a great, like somebody I would love to marry like in the future, but mm-hmm. it's not there at that point. And I was just shocked. I was like, 
Yeah. Oh, so this is all you want. You just want me physically and that's it. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. And, then, <laughs> and now you can make a, an informed decision like, well, okay. Do I just want to her that way too? Or do I want to maybe not do that? You you can now make an informed decision because they were honest. I met a guy recently and, and you know, we'll, 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 we'll wrap up. He asked me, um, do you believe in that Steve Harvey thing? That's kind of how he worded it. You believe in that Steve Harvey thing? And I'm like, what, what is Steve that? Harvey that thing? Man wrote a whole book. He, he, he did. He, he, do, he do a lot of talking. I don't know what, what thing we talking about. And he's like, you know, the whole 90 day rule thing. Instantly, it sent off an alert in my brain that said he wants to have sex That's before what? the first 90 days. OK, like literally you asking me that question told me everything. It told me so much. It told me so much. Like I was like, OK, this is such an interesting question for like a first or second conversation, you know, but OK, cool. You it's on your mind. You, you clearly want to know, are you going to have to wait to have sex with me? That's what you got to mess with somebody be like, no, I don't agree with it. I was thinking more at 180. <laughs> <laughs> 360. I was thinking marriage. I was thinking marriage. You know, I'm, you know, I like Steve's theory, but I actually would rather go with the Bible. I like Jesus's theory on this, on this his subject, you know? So I was just like, hmm, you know, it's paying attention. It, I didn't. I didn't stop. I haven't stopped talking to him. You know, yeah. I didn't stop talking to him. But it's 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 like, hmm, hmm. It's interesting that that's on your mind so mm -hmm. early. It's interesting that that's on your mind so quick. When I we we when when there are so many other things to be talking about other than my internal timetable for when I'm gonna give you some sex. You know, how we I break out into songs sometime about a relevant thing. A R. Kelly song came into my head, and I was about to sing, and I was like, nah. well. Nah, and not. on that note, let's wrap this episode up before things get crazy in here. I was like, nah, I ain't going to sing that. I ain't going to sing that. Um, but Anonymous, first, like, we thank you for writing in. And yeah. I understand the human element of this. Like, sure, sure. We've all had we've situations all, like this. Yes. We ain't judging you. We nope. do, Like, we all had these situations where it's like somebody that's like, ah. And you know they kind of sell you on something that ain't going to really cash out when you go to cash that thing out. Like, it's going they're going to be like, no funds available because mm -hmm. it ain't nothing really that's that it. they gave you. Um, It's just words. But mm -hmm. you kind of just want to roll with that and just feel like you feel better if you feel like you got duped. Like, well, they said it, and huh, I just huh. I fell for it. How, what, what could I do? Right. I didn't know. Like, <laughs> it makes you feel better sometimes about yourself. Right. So we understand. But um, with this situation, I guess the last question is, should she have more patience? Was she wrong? Anything like that? I think uh, a lot of times in these situations, you, especially when you are in a position where you broke it off with somebody. Mm-hmm. And then they in return break it off with you. It's a little pride hit, right? Mm -hmm. Like when somebody breaks something off with you, right? Yes, yes. And it's like, did I do something? And you kind of almost want to like make it right to show like, nah, I'm good. Like ain't nothing wrong with me. Like mm -hmm. I'm fine. Mm -hmm. um, but if somebody doesn't even want to take the time to talk something out with you, figure it out with you, mm -hmm. um, come to some type of solution, mm -hmm. then that's probably not somebody that wants to take you serious and somebody that you shouldn't take serious. Nope. One of the ways that I knew that Bree was somebody that I wanted to take serious because I was like, this is the first person I've ever been with to where when things got rough, I wanted to work it out and didn't want to leave. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it mm -hmm. was like, oh, okay, that's that's a different that's a change for me yeah like people i would cut people off like when you start getting annoying or you get on my nerves or you do something that's unflattering to me or something i don't like i just mm -hmm. be like yeah i'm about to let this person go yeah. but my wife was the first person i was like all right let me call it like we need to work this out we need to figure yeah. this out we need to yeah. talk through this and something like that so if somebody really care about you and they want something to work like I've, I've had times to where something has went wrong and I've seen like a charge or something and it was like $5 and I was like, I ain't going to call. But I had some times where I called that customer service number like, listen, hell, yeah, I'm waiting 30, 45 minutes because I'm trying to get this figured out. Like mm -hmm. uh, hung up. I got to wait another 45. I'm calling, I'm calling back. right back. I'm waiting because uh -huh. I'm trying to get it figured out Like because mm -hmm. I care about whatever that thing is. So mm -hmm. you'll know when somebody like cares about something enough to where they want to fight for it. Because right. if you ain't willing to fight for it a month and a half, then like... <laughs> 
<laughs> See you. We got a lot of time that we're going to have to fight for this. Or you're going to have to fight for this. Or you, like, we're going to have to really be trying to hold on to what we have. That's right. That's so, right. I saw someone say recently, getting into a relationship is easy. Staying in that relationship is the hard part. Working to maintain it and keep it together is the hard part. Um, anonymous, your questions very specifically, are you wrong for what you want? Um, you know, with all this being so new, are you expecting too much too soon? Like you said, Dre, should she have been more patient? I actually have no desire to answer any of those questions because that's not the takeaway here. Your takeaway is not so much for that person and what you expected of him specifically and that you wanted him to show you effort and consistency. I want your takeaways to be about what your standards are and how you see yourself. What is the value of you? What is your worth? Once you establish those things and be really clear about those things and that these are things that you're not going to negotiate on, those questions, they'll, they'll answer themselves. They'll answer themselves. So you've got to, I would say, sharpen your discernment on not resting your head on what people say and be much more focused on what people do. He did you a favor by once you expressed to him that you wanted consistency and you wanted effort and pretty much that's the last time you heard from him. He showed you exactly what you needed to see. And that was that he was not interested in that. Mm -hmm. He showed you that. So going forward, my biggest advice to you is one, slow down. Don't worry about extending him patience in, in his situation. Extend yourself some patience to take, take the time to learn the people that are in your life. These men that are around you or pursuing you. Be patient with yourself and your process. Don't let anybody rush you or push you through it. Take your time until you are comfortable with getting in a certain space with someone. And last but not least... I do not personally think having dates inside of your your home is something that you should do early on. I just sure. don't. There are other places where you can um, have the same intimate conversations that don't have to be your house. There are plenty of public places that you can do that in, public settings that you could do that in where you all can find a corner and it feels like it's just the two of you. But you don't have to do that inside of your house because I say all the time, my home is my sanctuary. That energy in there is the most sacred energy that I have in my life. I don't feel safer anywhere than inside of my own home. And therefore, anybody that comes into it, I feel like I have to understand their energy. I have to understand that. And I can't understand it if I met you two days ago. I can't understand that if, if the totality of my relationship with you was just sleeping together. It's, it's casual sexual situations that I've had where we never went to each other's houses. Yeah. We went to hotels. I've done that. That's a that's an energy that is, you know, you're not expecting it to be all sacred because it's a hotel. People come in and out of those rooms day you in and day out. Yeah, exactly. That's like my boy, my best friend in his dorm room in college. Mm -hmm. He didn't have a TV. Hey, we here? <laughs> There's nothing here to do. Okay, you know, TV, just a bed and us, you know, so you you know what's up. Protect the energy of your home. It is your sanctuary and don't allow anyone to come in there that you are not prepared to absorb their energy or exchange an intimate energy with them. So yeah. I would not suggest for anybody to have dates in their house like sure. too prematurely. It's just it's a breeding ground for things to be expedited yeah okay, so. and i'll add as we end mm -hmm. that and i've said this before is that remember that everything you do in a relationship especially in the beginning is setting the foundation for which your relationship will be built upon mm -hmm. um and that is every single experience is being like logged as a part of that foundation so understand that if you start doing at home dates all the time but now you're trying to switch it up in the future. Mm. Then that person's going to look back and be like, well, we used to do this all the time. And this like understand that if you want something, you have to start setting that standard in the beginning. You can't start at a low standard. It's way higher, uh, way harder to start at a low standard yeah. and try to start raising the low standard. Mm -hmm. That's what like, I told you. I told you all that when I talked about the value thing, if somebody <laughs> get a place that's a million dollar mansion for $250 like they ain't gonna want to pay more why would they, they ain't not even gonna want to pay 300 let alone a million no, no not at all <laughs> so it's like you have to keep your standard at where you want it so if that's something that you know you don't want then 
you know don't don't settle for that and i'm thinking maybe because they had their previous experiences that's why they had the comfortability with that but just keep that in mind when you when mind. you're doing that that's for sure well thank you again for writing and we hope we were able to help if you have a scenario and you want us to hear it go to our website relationshiprestored.com yeah. click the contact it's a lot of c's there <laughs> and write into the show um you can also follow us on social media i'm at ronnie cake that is jay smith and at relationship restored we'll see you next time peace